right, hello everyone. It's Miss Corley. I just wanted to create a short video showing you the final steps of what you need to do once you finish stitching your hand embroidered pillow. Here you'll find a student's work that they've finished. Um, they have taken a picture of the front and they have taken a picture of the back of their project. Um, the next step is to go ahead and find your background fabric and go ahead and line it up. The way you want to line it up would be have the two sides of the fabric that you want to be seen on the outside facing one another. I like to say, oops, sorry, fancy sides face and ugly sides out. All right, so make sure you have that lined up. I have my students typically cut their background fabric just slightly larger than their project itself. Um, I just think it makes it easier and they're not as stressed out. Um, after we do that, I have my students grab we do have sewing machines here. So for those of you that are doing this virtually, you'll be doing this um, from home and you'll just be, do be doing a very simple running stitch around the perimeter of your project, always leaving an opening at the bottom of your pillow. I should probably turn it around this way. So on this pillow, um, I would have the students do a running stitch all the way around. Now we've measured those lines out um, using a ruler to make sure the distance between these two lines are exactly the same on the horizontal or the landscape and the distance between the lines here should be the same. This one doesn't, I don't have the ruler, but no, it does look about. You use the furthest out stitches um, for where you do your measurement. Okay, I might do a separate video on that if y'all have any questions. You will always leave an opening at the base of your pillow. So you're gonna to wanna to leave it open. I have my students use their fingers, do this with your fingers and make sure you've got a hole large enough for the width of your hand, okay? Um, so you're able to stuff those corners with your polyfill. I think that's about it on this one. I'm gonna go ahead and show you what type of stitch you do once you finish sewing it all the way around. This is one of the students' um, samples that they stitched on the sewing machine. And then once you get finished, all you need to do is flip it right side out. Make sure you get your hand in there so you can get, poke those corners out with your fingers the best tool God gave you right here. Go all the way around to get all four corners popped out with your finger. Some of my students like to use the eraser end of their pencil. You wanna make sure it looks like a point though and not like a belly button. And now it's ready to be stuffed. When I'm stuffing my pillow, I wanna make sure that I stuff my corners first. So what I do is I just tear off a little bit of polyfill, just a small amount and I take it inside my pillow and I shove it in the corners as far as it'll go. We don't want our pillows to have empty corners and that's a very, very common mistake when making a homemade pillow. So make sure you shove that polyfill all the way into the corners nice and tight and then proceed to fill the rest of it. Once you flip your pillow and pop out your corners, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you go down to the opening and tuck that raw edge it's frayed. I want you to tuck that raw edge inside the pillow so it looks like the bottom of the pillow. And I want you to iron that so you've got a nice, beautiful crease right across the opening. This is the last step after we stuff it. We will be sewing this closed. And when you have a nice pressed crease across the bottom, it helps make your pillow look nice and clean and it makes your stitches easier to see. Okay, I finished stuffing this pillow. I made sure I stuffed the corners. And sometimes they, it likes to have a mind of its own, so you're gonna have to make sure you shove your finger in there, make sure it's still got some stuffing in there, some polyfill. Um, I like to tell my students to stuff their pillows a little bit more than they would like, so make themselves a little bit uncomfortable with a little bit more stuffing than what they would typically do, just because over time these pillows will get flat. Now, once we're done, and remember how I told you to iron the edge of your pillow? This is one that I did not iron the edge. The crease, I should say. I did not create a crease, which would have made this a little bit easier. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll that raw edge under with my finger so that I don't see the raw edge. And it's rolled down into the inside of the pillow. And then I'm going to take my straight pin and I'm going to weave it kind of like a snake in the grass. So I'm basically doing this with the needle to hold it together. I'm gonna do a couple of them just to keep it closed. This is gonna help me in making sure that my pillow stays closed while I do this finishing stitch. 
Now when you do the finishing stitch, usually I teach my sixth grader, see I don't like this one. See how it's rolling out? So I'm gonna do this one again. I usually have my sixth graders do something called a whip stitch or my, my newer sewers. You could be a seventh or eighth grader that have never done this project before. I like my girls and guys that are a little bit more advanced and more confident and comfortable with hand sewing to do a, la ow, a ladder stitch, a ladder stitch or an invisible stitch. They're just called two different things. Okay, so now I like how it's closed. It looks nice and clean across the edge and now I'm ready to thread what I call my skinny needle with my skinny thread. And so I'll show you that next.